And joining me right now is House Financial Services Chairman, Texas Congressman Jeb Henserling. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me back. And we and we thought Macron and 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 the president were were buddies. We thought they were good <laughs> friends. But look, but look at these well, tweets back and forth. I think the bromance may be over for the moment. What do you think about this trade story, though, uh, Congressman? I know that many people were worried about the aluminum and steel tariffs. Are you one of them? Well, I am one of them. I, I have two steel plants in my district back in East Texas. I've heard from both of them. Uh, they are concerned about what this is going to mean to their pricing, what ultimately this could mean uh, to their workforce. Uh, and so they, they're fearful. And so, again, trade is not a zero-sum game. And so I, I hope that the president proves brilliant in his uh, strategy, but we have to be very careful not to cut off our nose to spite our face because for every one job in the production of either aluminum uh, or, or steel, there's probably 20 jobs uh, downstream in fabrication, like the ones in my district that are either fabricating steel buildings or fabricating uh, still shelving, not to mention ultimately the impact on our consumers. Uh, and so the answer, of course, is obviously we want to export more, but we don't want to import less. That hurts consumers and that also hurts American jobs. And so the president has to be very, very careful. Here. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, right now we assume maybe it's a negotiating point. When you look at China, though, that's a different story. Are China you, is a very different story. Are you China, happy with the way this president has been pushing back on China? They're stealing our intellectual property, oh, has been for decades. Are. They're transferring technology from American companies to Chinese companies. They won't even admit they're stealing the theft. What are we going to do about it? And then there's this ZTE deal this morning. Well, you have a lot to, there to unpack. Yeah. I mean, China has absolutely abused all the trading rules. Uh, that are acceptable in the world. And that, that China ought to be the true target here. They have indeed, either through hook or crook, uh, taken our intellectual property. That has to stop. I fully support the president in standing up for that. And so I'm very happy that in the House Financial Services Committee, we've recently passed uh, a bill that would strengthen what is known as the CFIUS process, having to do uh, with. Uh, uh, inbound foreign investment, uh, direct foreign investment into the U.S., and using that as a tool to try to stop a lot of this uh, theft of, of intellectual property and, and, and technology. So we're taking steps uh, in the House. I know they've passed a similar bill in the Senate. I hope we can get something on the president's desk very soon because China is where the problem lies. Right, and maybe the aluminum steel tariffs are part of that, part of pushing back on China because a lot of the aluminum and steel is actually coming from China, even if it's produced in China, even if it's coming through different countries. Well, that's true, but again, a lot of it is coming from Canada, and a lot of it is coming from the EU, and it's all being done under what is known as Section 232, which ostensibly is about national defense. But again, what I don't understand is we're taking a less than 5% of our domestic, our domestic still in aluminum goes into national defense. Right. And then if you look at the membership of NATO, it is almost identical to the membership of the EU. So I don't quite understand the argument that on the one hand, these are our closest allies uh, that we fight with on the battlefield, but we somehow don't trust them when it comes to uh, steel and aluminum. So yeah. I don't quite understand that argument again I would encourage the president to focus to focus uh, on China but to also realize again that uh, success is not necessarily measured by lowering the trade deficit right if you look at our periods of greatest economic prosperity they coincide with the times that we're running the largest trade deficit yeah. what we have to concentrate on is again exporting more not necessarily importing less this is the nation of the free and we ought to be free to import still and aluminum right. if that's what American citizens well, choose to do and, and also the issue is the, the theft over intellectual property and the forced transfer of technology. I mean, that's really where the issues are, not necessarily getting a better trade deficit number. But let me turn to the battle over the border, because there's been back and forth among your colleagues, certainly, about reaching an immigration deal. The key issue about giving visas to dreamers, it's throwing things into chaos, isn't it? What's your position here? 
Well, I, I, I'm encouraged. I think uh, I participated in the Republican conference meeting uh, yesterday. And again, there were some disparate views, but I, I think we are narrowing uh, the windows. I think, again, there is broad consensus that, number one, we have to control our borders. And, and a nation that ceases to have borders ceases to be uh, a, a nation. And so I think there's very uh, strong feelings that that has to be uh, done. But again, if we're going to extend some kind of legalization status, uh, to uh, the dreamers, and they right. make a very compelling case, we've got to make sure that we don't have a future class of those. We want to make sure that there aren't parents in Central America who, uh, you know, put their children in harm to put them on trains thinking that somehow they're going to be granted uh, some kind of uh, amnesty or legal status as well. So we've got to solve the problem. And there's a yeah. very big difference between legalization and cutting into the citizenship line. I want to be a nation of immigrants. I just want them to be legal immigrants right. and I want to make sure that our immigration is based upon those coming to America who want to roll up their sleeves, work hard and be economic assets, not economic uh, liabilities. We need merit-based immigration. Right. We need to control the border and then allow the dreamers uh, you know, a legalization status that allows them to earn citizenship but not cut in line, that's contrary to the rule of law. It's not fair to the millions who came here legally. Of course, and, th and that's why I scratch my head about this back and forth with the Democrats. I mean, why would we not want structure and, and, and legal immigration? Why would we be making this big fuss over the fact that we just want to see legal immigration? Uh, anyway, that's a whole conversation. We'll see where that develops. But I got to ask you about this Obamacare news this morning. The Justice Department says it will no longer defend key parts of the Affordable Care Act. That includes the requirement that people have health insurance. The decision announced in a filing in a federal court. Chairman Henseling, what's your reaction to this? Because this is obviously going to impact people with pre existing conditions. Well, I've always thought that the problem was uh, constitutionally questionable on a good day. I'm, I'm still pulling out. Uh, my hair from the original Supreme Court position that somehow found this legal. So I haven't necessarily read the full legal briefs, uh, but I think a very good case can be made again. Obamacare rest on a shaky constitutional foundation and it's bad public policy. Now again, there is so much that has to be done. There needs to be a reasonable transition to a system uh, where people are allowed in a very competitive marketplace that protects people with pre-existing conditions, but to get the health care that's right for them and their family and not have 140 different boards, commissions right. and, and new bureaucracies get in between somebody and their family doctor. I mean, all the promises that were made about Obamacare have proven false to the right. American people. No, I people. understand, but do you failed. want to make this change going into the midterm elections? Well, I want to believe, listen, the rule of law is a foundational principle. If it's not legal, it's not legal. Right. And so the Justice Department is not compelled to defend a law they do not believe is legal, they do not believe is constitutional. Again, I want to make sure that anything we do is, 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 is gradual. I mean, you can't flip a switch here, but you do have to transition to a, to a better system because for the vast majority of people, Obamacare is not working for them. Maybe it works for, yeah. for some people, but for most most people, they're paying a whole lot more to get a whole lot less. Very expensive, let's face it. Mr. Chairman, good to see you, sir. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you.